Give your vassal a colony so they can't migrate? Um, I can't... How, how? How? What do you mean? I can't force them to colonize. You, uh... I don't think you can... He did. He stole my freaking province. <laughs> Sneaky little bastard. Um, I don't think you can grant him a colony. I'd have to finish the colony. Yeah, you can't grant a colony. Attack him, obviously. Now, now they're all just they're both disloyal because he's training troops relative to the new force limit that he's gained. He's a little bastard. There is the uh, the other exploity type thing you can do again, where you surrender to someone you have 100% won against. So I could even attack my own vassal. Let's just think: the worst you could possibly have would be 20 war exhaustion. If you had 20 war exhaustion and negative three stab, and you just attacked your own subject practically every month, how quickly could you fill in the world with free cores? Hmm. Building improvements for your vassal's land encourage him to stay in one place? No. He'll still want to move around. Found some copper. I mean, 20 war exhaustion is 20 unrest. But, worst case scenario, because it's all our culture, our religion and everything, it's just going to be peasants, which have no leader, and we've got potential for banners, so I think even if we had rebellions, we'd be able to do it. It's kind of tempting to try attacking our own subject over and over again. The thing that you do is, okay, here's how you would do it. You would start a colony. You would attack the subject, right? So, we have a colony. We attack the subject. We 100% the subject. We surrender to the subject, giving him our current capital. This becomes our capital. You don't have a core on it, but it automatically completes the colony, even though it's only got 10 settlers. So it's instantaneously converted into a core, or like a full city. Okay? So now you've got an uncored capital, but it's a full city. Next month, you attack him again, after you've started a new colony. He then... You then surrender this province, and now you're here. And then you're here, and then you're here, and then you're here, and then you're here. So he has all of this uncored land, and then... It will get reverted to you. Like, you can pay the admin point. You would have to pay the admin points to core it. Sure. Because you, you want your core to exist. Because then he gets rebels. And then the rebels break to you. And then you get the land back. Does that make sense? I think that still works. We could at least try it. I mean... The idea of just dev pushing for the next 50 to 100 years is kind of boring to me, actually. So... Shall we try? Let's try it. So we have, uh, hold on, let's sync up with our migration cooldown. Here, we're gonna go until November 1st. It's probably still better to just wait for, um, for the next 50 years and just keep on migrating, but I wanna try it. I would like a siege pip leader. Don't start calling until you're piecing out. Hey, that's a good idea. Um, <laughs> Shurik the cat, you're quick, man. Shurik the cat, I need siege pip. Just give me siege pip. Yeah, siege pip. Cool. Um, let's pull these guys off. Let's just cancel the colony. There's no reason to maintain the colony until we are about to piece out. Our lead, our subject has a one two four one actually. Subject's helping out with the siege. Neat. Isn't there no separatism in the New World? Mmm... There's no separatism when you are a colonial nation, like a, like, say you're Castile attacking the New World. You don't get separatism on natives, but I believe natives get separatism on natives. Again, we, we're missing out on tons of monarch points by, by testing this, but... At this point, we basically have an infinite monarch point exploit, it feels like. 
So whatever. All right, so we start our colony. Because we have 100% war score against him, we can force him to do whatever we want. And we're going to then surrender, making him take our capital. He has to accept because we have 100%. So he takes our capital from us, which is bad, right? Um, we obviously don't want to... Yeah, you take that. I'm not giving you money. I'm <laughs> forced to have it here. Okay. You're taking my capital. And that's all I think I want to do. Nothing else. Okay, so we do that. He takes our capital. Our new capital becomes here. Next month, this will automatically become a city. Actually, instantaneously now, it's already a city. We core it. Actually, do we even need to core it? We have this as our core capital. Okay, so we don't have a capital here, but... I think what we do is we now just migrate to here. And then we bump stab. And now in a month, we just attack him again. And now this core... We should... Wait. Yeah, he's not a vassal. Right, so we lose the vassal relationship. There is that. In the same federation as this guy down here. That's not ideal. Yeah, he's our, he's our subject, so yeah, okay. So now, we're breaking truce. Five war exhaustion, five aggressive... Like, aggressive succession, who cares? So now we declare... Doesn't matter what we declare. We go siege him out again. And this is what we care about. See how he's got 16.6 .6 unrest in a province with our culture? Like, when these rebels spawn, they will be awesome, awesome separatists. That's our subject that's black flagged. But in order to cause him to actually give us the... Like, we, we have to keep on sieging this over and over again. So, we want to try to make it so that the garrison is super, super weak. So we can just assault right away. Like, a really good siege leader would be great. Those occupation lines look kind of weird. Do we need another colony? We'll start the colony when we're done with the siege. So we're not paying for it. Because we are losing money again. Do we even need advisors? It's a great point. Probably not. Compared to the monarch points we generate from migration, it's not much. Yeah, let's just fire that. I'll keep this guy, though. He's half price. Just waiting on the siege is like the slowest part to this whole process. Alright, so now we will... Start colonizing this province next. Then we will surrender to him, making him take our current capital. Now we have another Migratia core on a 38 dev province. We will migrate to there. WTF is going on? Really weird stuff, man. Okay, we boost stab. We truce break. <laughs> Your other vassal is confused. AF. I know, right? So again, the, the real issue here is that his capital is not moving, so... We have to re-siege it. And unless we get a lucky wall breach, we can't assault because we have no artillery. Um, hey, wall breach. Okay, so that's really helpful. I'll speed it up tremendously. Alright, once again, we need to start colonizing. It doesn't even matter what we start colonizing because we're just going to migrate. So we're going to colonize, I guess, here. Once again, we surrender our capital. We then migrate. So what, yeah, if, if, okay, if you're confused as hell, which I wouldn't be surprised, uh, would you rather spend two ducats a month for, say, at our current tech with only 10 global settlers increase? Would you rather colonize 
for, say, 8 to 10 years at 2 ducats a month. Let's call it 10 years. That's 120 months. Would you rather spend 240 ducats or do this and just have instantaneous full cities with full cores at 38 plus development? That's why we're doing it. The downside is obviously <laughs> 20 war exhaustion, uh, huge unrest, awesome peasants. <laughs> I still love that awesome peasants, man. It's hilarious. Alright, so in this war, we're going to take his capital. And all of his money. Which, the money is based on his, uh... His total development, and his total development's kind of high. So yeah, we're going to take all that. Now, we're going to... We can't migrate, because we have two provinces. I'm not going to core this, because why the hell would I pay 240 admin points to core a province that I can get a free core on anyway. Now his capital is gone from here. Next month we attack him again. Let's bump stab. And now this war, we're just going to surrender to him on, and we're going to make him take this province. So we'll have a core there, and then this will become our capital. It'll become our capital, but it's not going to become a core. But we'll migrate. That's what we'll do. We'll migrate off of it. And when we migrate off of it, it will... Look at all the money we can... We can, easy, we can like bankrupt this guy. Okay, with these two occupations, we might have enough to already surrender to him. So I'm going to surrender my current capital. And I'm not giving him money, so I'm surrendering my capital. That becomes my new capital, but without a core. But we migrate away to here. We wait a month. We colonize this province, and now we'll get a free core. Yeah, he still has a core there, but that doesn't matter. I'm trying to create my own personal core there with the colony. What's creating the core is the act of migration. So... We need to actually... Time it right so that we can migrate onto that province. And I've kind of surrounded this land a little bit. We just have, you know, 318 aggressive expansion with this guy. That doesn't matter though, does it? You can migrate... Yeah, you can migrate across Citas. Okay, so we start colonizing here. We're now here. We now migrate over to here. It will become impossible to sustain. There, There is going to become a point where we, this won't work anymore. Because either the rebels will spawn, like, again, he's got, he's got unrest in every province that we've done this on. So there will be rebels. They will definitely spawn. Plus, he's, he's like frantically trying to core all this land that I'm forcing into his, just down his gullet. Um... Oh, crap, I can't colonize across this. Okay, that's okay. I can colon I can migrate from here down to here. That'll work, too. We'll start colonizing there. Okay, now, even though he doesn't want the overextension, we can surrender. So, take my capital. Now we migrate to here. Now we have a core there as well. I think we just keep doing this, though, until we see the Rebels. Every time we're doing it, we're gaining another province. The only thing we're missing out on is the potential for, like, lots of development. We could just reconquest now. Hey, Rebels! Look! Awesome Separatists! <laughs> it's a 22 stack of awesome Separatists! Yeah, five shock too. That's funny. <laughs> That's so dumb. So, uh, they're gonna automatically return the course to us, and we can't stop that. We can keep surrendering to him over and over again. And again, being at 20 war exhaustion is not really a penalty to us, because they're just peasants. Um, so we could do this until we're tired of it, really. Or until the aggressive expansion gets to 999 with literally everyone in the world. Even these guys are like, hey, hey, that's that's some pretty awesome aggressive expansion. 
You should stop that. Now, I am kind of tempted to win this war in order to demand a lot of money from him right now, rather than lose it to create another slightly lower, like... There's, these, these, these provinces don't have a lot of development. I think we win this war. And we take lots of money because his money is based on the development. We take money. Um... Let me just think for a sec. So, we have cores on literally every province he owns. The rebels will full occupy him. There's nothing he can do to stop a 22 stack. So, every single province is going to get returned to us once they occupy half the country. So this is probably our last opportunity to migrate. And he's not going to exist anymore, so there's no reason for war reps. Why are the rebels 22k? Number of provinces and development of those provinces. I think we just take his money. Hopefully we get one more migration so we can get our capital into that state. But if we don't, then it's alright. Alright, so. One, two, three, four out of seven. Which means on the next monthly tick he will break to rebels and we should get all of our provinces back. Which means we do not get to migrate our capital again, unfortunately. On the first. Boom. It did not take away everything. He got to keep one. Three development. My guess is that you can't actually completely go away, but every other core got returned to us. Why specifically it gave him this one, I, I don't actually know. We've expanded Migratia. Yes, we have. We can no longer migrate. We're no longer Migratia. Declare on him. <laughs> we do have a core on that province. What would be the reason for doing it? Also, by the way, if we weren't at our force limit when, when he broke, we would have inherited that army. But because we were already at the force limit, we didn't get any of it. So let's say we attack him. We could then surrender all of our land to him again. The question just becomes how long do we repeat that? And is it better to just... I mean, right now we have 147 development, full cord. There's no way you could colonize this quickly. Like this is just better than a straight up colonization. Feel like you can keep going for as long as you can. Well, someone in chat, who was it, just said that uh, they tested out creating a custom nation adjacent to them and they were able to do the renaissance and everything. The thing that's stopping us from actually getting the achievement is the, the fact that we can't reform our government until the new world is colonized by someone from the old world. So, we're waiting potentially hundreds of years, 100 to 200 years, depending on how quickly Portugal gets here. That's a lot of sitting around doing nothing. Yeah, I kind of want to just get the achievement, but this is a, a weird little exploit. They, I don't know how they could possibly fix it. I guess they can make it so migrating only gives you a core if the previous province had a core. And of course, there is the downside that we have aggressive expansion with people who don't even really know about us. We have, um, you know, 20 war exhaustion. But in theory, I could just buy that all down now. I think we should go back to playing standard. And even if we didn't buy it down, what kind of rebels would we have? A 23 stack of peasants. We could easily beat peasants. We have a force of 16 now. We might as well attack him and get that last core back. Yeah, <laughs> we also have revanchism. Because <laughs> we've been losing so many wars. Which means that we've, we've maintained our army tradition and stuff. We can raise eight banners. Just kidding. We can raise 14 banners. And this is possibly the worst I've ever felt for an AI. Well, <laughs> all the things that have happened to our, our quote unquote subject.
We can still develop provinces, but um I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show off the neighbor discount exploit. So we're going to continue to develop. We're not going to do any tech. Not even a little bit. We could start colonizing like normal, I guess. I mean, we do have the money for it. We'll colonize a bit. Um, and we should probably get power projection from attacking this guy. He's allied to you. You are our rival. We really just want to get power projection maxed out. Move the capital back. Um, that would cost 200 points, unfortunately. That is a great location for the capital, though, so sure. Let's just do it. And let's run a trade power edict. And now that we have more than one province, we can start building buildings, and it makes sense to actually do that. Actually, you know what? This is a great spot for a fort right now. I want to just get a fort first. I'll save in the capital. And then... Let's just build the advisor cost one here. The land force limit one, can we put here? Hopefully we'll be making positive income soon. If not, whatever. Actually did catch his army, unfortunately, in the mountains. Yikes. We weren't at full strength. He has a 1-4-3 leader. And he's got a lot of troops. Come on, my banners. You gotta reinforce a little faster. He's got a much bigger army than I expected. That's shock advantage, man. He's got a 3-3-1 and a 1-4-3. Of course, you get a wall breach. You know what I think it is? He's leading a federation. That federation bonus. Is he leading federation? Led by... Yes. So he's got a morale advantage from being a federation leader. Federation leader plus 10. Hosting a tournament. Power projection. All that other shit. Alright. I'll admit. I uh, significantly underestimated. Want me to end overlordship of somebody and give you a bunch of money? Fine. Fuck you. Piece of shit. <laughs> God. What an annoying piece of crap, man. I did full recover. I, that was my army at max morale right there. Him being a Federation leader is just... It was too much morale, and he's got two two good leaders. We've got a 0-3, and he's got a 3-3, and a 1-4, and a bunch of bullshit. 